Hi, this is Wakesa Majimoyo, co-director of Aya Educational Institute, and I'm here to talk to you about an exciting project. It's actually a school-wide project. Everyone is involved, students, teachers, parents, and community, ultimately. It's called the Family Lore Project, L-O-R-E, like as in folklore. This is a project designed to heal alienation. Professor Amos Wilson, an esteemed black psychologist, put out a challenge to African-centered education and Af African-centered educators. And he said what we need to do uh, in our curriculum, in our teaching, in our methodology, is we have to succeed in healing alienation. What he said is that the process of education and socialization in America is one designed to alienate us from our culture, from our families, from our African ways, uh, from strategies that we um, may have used in the past. And he summed it up by saying we are alienated to serve aliens. We are alienated this feeling of alienation, of aloneness, of, of, of um, I don't know where I belong, I don't know my purpose. All of those are symptoms of alienation. And we're alienated so that we can be manipulated to serve those who are alien to our community, those who profit from our misery. It doesn't matter whether they are aware of that or not, um, that the teachers and or the school systems and or the socializing agencies or agents, it doesn't matter whether they're aware of it or it doesn't matter whether they're intending it. The result is that we're alienated to serve aliens, and in fact we do. So if we're going to be an African-centered um, educational institution so that our students graduate smart, graduate prepared, graduate confident, we also want them to graduate and use all of that in order to know how to serve our community first and the world after that. So, in order to achieve that, we have to heal alienation. Incidentally, healing alienation also increases academic performance, academic retention, um, integration, uh, understanding. And so, it's a big thing at our Education Institute that we heal alienation and a number of things that we do are designed to do just that. But in addition to healing alienation, I also said, and I'll repeat here, that this project, this Family Lure project, also has a goal to increase academic retention and academic performance and student confidence. Okay. So let me get into this Family Lure project and how might you know it just do this. Every student is asked to gather information from its family. Literature, that is um, songs, well, two kinds, oral literature and written literature. So they're asked to f ask their parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins uh, for writings. Uh, they could be love poems that the stu uh, they wrote when they were teenagers. They could be uh, love letters from a parent to parent or grandparent. They could be um, any other kind of poem. It could be a play that they may have written for church or for uh, when they were in school. Uh, it could be a paper they wrote in school. It could have been a, a letter to the editor uh, either during school or after school. It could have been um, uh, uh, a Facebook post. It could be um, anything that is written. Now, some people have a problem because they say, well, that's not literature. Well, what is literature? Things that, uh, writings particularly, but oral literature would go into the oral area, but the writing literature, what's literature is, is things that are valued. You know, particularly written pieces that have value. Every family, every family has a lore. It has stories, it has tales, it has proverbs, it has both written and unwritten lore. And we want the students to begin to tap into that. So their job is to collect it. And twice a week, they put that in their family lure stash. 
And I've talked a lot about the written pieces, okay? Um, and we really want students and parents not to trip out over whether or not this is a great piece of writing, okay? Um, we have to have it just submitted. Let's, let's begin to look at it. Oppression encourages us to discount whatever we've written, all right? And if, if others have not put it up on the mantelpiece and dusted it off and shined the spotlight on it, then it must not be good. Like, no, 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 we can't go for that, all right? So the students are beginning to examine uh, and collect that. And they're also asking questions. They're seeking out family stories. They're seeking out proverbs. They're seeking out uh, songs that, were, that are sung, that, that are favorite. Even if the family didn't compose them. If When times get hard, you know, I always sing that same old song, all right, or I play that song, um, or grandma would say that, or there's a joke that um, big, big Daddy would tell all the time. Those are the kinds of things when you get at funerals and family reunions, when you get together and you remember, yeah, you remember he always used to tell that joke. You remember he always said, nothing be a failure but a trial. Doesn't have to be original, but the, the, that oral mm, literature that held the family together, that helps define the family. And the students are detectives along with their parents and their grandparents and uncles and aunts. And they are, they are beginning to uh, record these stories and put them down, okay? and they put them in their stash. That's step number one, that they look for their oral and written literature, stories and writings, and, and you put them in their family lore stash. Twice a month, their language arts instructors ask them to go to the stash, pick out a piece that they have placed there, read it, examine it, and reflect on it. So the students now have to write a reflection paper so they're adding their uh, writing to the family lore based on what? The family lore. Now, uh, the instructor may also ask them to not write a reflection paper, um, but maybe a reflective poem. So their poetry may be inspired by something that they got from the family lore. They also may ask them to do an analysis paper. And what is the analysis? Well, it depends upon what category the, the student has put it in. So as they're collecting the oral and written literature, it goes into whether it's prose, whether it's play, whether it's poetry, um, and the various subgenres uh, of literature there. And based on the category that the student placed it in, then they'll do the analysis. So if it's a poem, then they'll look for imagery and they'll look for rhyme and rhythm and those things that you look for when you talk about poetry. If it's prose, then they'll look for those. And so now they'll do analysis. So now their language arts teachers ha has reflective pieces, writings, even poetry, uh, drawings even, and, uh, and also the students' analysis of their mothers or fathers or grandfathers or uncles or aunts' uh, stories and works and sayings and songs. And so then those pieces are culled and all of our students will put their family lore, selected pieces from their family lore, oral or written, and their analysis and reflection into a published document, not a document, a book. First we create a manuscript and then we send that to the publishers and we create a book of Aya students, Aya families, family lore. Hope you understand the power of it because um, that's the mechanism of it. The academics of it and the healing of it is also tremendous. You see, if I'm caring about the material, then when the student, when the teacher corrects my paper, whether it's my reflective writing or my analysis writing, when they, when they say, this, instead of a comma here, you need a semicolon, I'm likely to attend to it more because I care about what I'm writing about. I'm connected to what I'm writing about. And so the academic retention of the grammar and the, um, um, how to write it better so that it communicates better what the student really wants to say, it's more likely to stick. It's more likely to be retained. So this process is, is not just a, a feel-good project. It is a feel-good project, and it is also uh, designed to help with academic retention. Many of you may not know that 
our thinking is accelerated by emotion. In matter of fact, the way it really goes is that we really don't need to suppress our emotion if we really want to think well. Our experiences generate emotions which generate thoughts and actions. At the neurological level, if there is no emotion, then no neurons are laid down. Literally, I'm talking about at the, at the very neurological level. Now this our ancestors have known for centuries, and European neurologists are catching up with that, and you know, God bless them. We've known it, and we don't just write about it and talk about it, it's integrated in our curriculum. In addition to retaining uh, writing and grammar skills that will come from this project, look at the confidence that will come. Look at the family history and then the, being able to place the family history within the context of the community history and then the nation and the world. Because of course, if you're going to family lure and you're gonna talk about something, it happened in some space and time. So this really is about student confidence. It's about actually also bringing the family together. It's about affirming the student by affirming the family. Now I want you to understand how very different that is from a typical public or private Euro European centered school. The student is being affirmed by the family being affirmed. We love that. That's the Family Little Project. If you have any questions, you know, there are two directors of the project, um, uh, Aza, Mama, Anna Aza uh, Smith, uh, and Anna Adeniji. Uh, I'm the co-director of the school, and they're the directors of the project. There are also other volunteers, and we're looking for volunteers, because to make this a successful project, we need a whole lot of hands, um, because we're working through a, a lot of injected oppression in order to make this work. Again, this is Wakesa Mazimoyo. I'm talking to you about the Family Lore Project. Aya's Family Lore, L-O-R-E, Project. Um, so hopefully this answers your question if you're a parent. Hopefully it piqued your interest if you're somebody uh, who um, might be interested in volunteering to help us make this project happen. Oh, oh man, how could I forget? The crown of this project, I said that a book will be published. Well, in this spring, uh, before the school year ends, we will have a conference. And this will be the conference about this family little project. We invite teachers, educators, homeschool educators, parents, the community. It is at this conference that the students will receive their copy of their family lore in a hardbound book. These students will read excerpts from that. And then we will break into sessions, workshop sessions, because of course that's, you know, I, we're a how-to family more than we are an ought-to family. And so we have workshops so that parents and other educators and other people in the community can really understand how we did it. It's not enough that we did it, but to, to break it down. How, how were we successful or what didn't work in it so that it can be improved upon? And so this family lure conference will happen second semester. We need hands on deck, so we need some volunteers for that uh, as well. And we also need donations for that. So if this excites you at all, then uh, please um, get in touch with uh, me or uh, Mama Fia at I Education Institute, 404-201-2356, uh, um, or 404-292-9002 is the school's number. Uh, IAED.com will also get you to us. This is Aya's Family Little Project. Thank you.